Hello, and this is the tutorial number five for editing a magazine template. We're going to be going over master pages, editing footers, duplicating pages, layers panel, and highlight and shadow effect. For this tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating on the Executive Portrait magazine. Um, this is a four spread plus two cover template, and it also has something called a master page. If you look at the pages panel, along with the page layouts. Above that is a master page. Double click on that. On this page we have the highlight and shadow. I also have footers and page numbers. The page numbers appear as A on the master page, but when you click on the template pages, and I'll scroll this up so you can see the pages change, there's two and three, four and five, six and seven, and you get the idea. So whenever you add another page to this layout, and you can do that by going to the top of the pages panel and insert pages, or you can duplicate pages, every new page that is added to, your, to this document will automatically have a page number attached to it in a consecutive order because it is assigned by the master page. Um, you can change these. Um, as far as the font and the color, you can even delete them if you don't want to, but the only way you can delete them is on the master page. Simply select them and hit delete if you want to remove them. Or you can use your type tool, select the text, and retype the information that you want to put in here in your website. You can even change the colors of the page number backgrounds. Just go into your swatch panel and choose a different color. Just make sure that you have your fill selected in the swatches panel and not the stroke. And when you change a color on here, you'll notice that every page now, the color is changed in the footer background on just the pages on the left hand side. If you want to change the colors on the right side, you need to go back to the master page, select the page number background, and change that color as well. And make sure your fill is selected, and choose your color. And again, I'll switch through these pages. You'll see that now every page is, um, on the left is green, and on the right is a tan color. Also, um, relating to the highlight and shadow effect, because it appears on every single one of these pages, we can turn it off. I put the highlight and shadow effect on its own layer because you may not want to use this for all of your magazine documents, especially if you're uploading to Issue. Issue puts a highlight and shadow effect on all the pages you upload, so it's unnecessary to have it on your artwork that you're uploading to them. So if you go to the layers palette, you'll notice the first layer at the very top that says highlight and shadow effect. And you'll see a little eyedropper next to that, um, next to the text that says highlight and shadow. Just click that off and click that on. And it takes the highlight and shadow effect off. Now when you go to export this file, and I'll show you that in the final tutorial, um, when we go to export, all these pages will no longer have the highlight and shadow effect on it if you have this layer turned off. If you have it on, it will appear on every layer when you export or print. Now if you want to duplicate any of these pages, page layouts because you want another full spread page or you want another page that has two single page uh, vertical images or even if you want to duplicate these grids, I'm going to duplicate the spread. You need to shift click both the, four, the fourth and fifth pages for the entire spread. In the Pages panel, I want you to go to the top right-hand corner, click on that little icon, and select Duplicate Spread. Now when you do this, it will move a couple of the pages down. If you go um, look at page 10, it has now taken the back page and moved it to page 10 rather than to the position where it should have been on page 12. Just click this page in the Pages panel and drag it down below past page 12 and it will shift those pages back again. So now we have the back page back on page 12, the on the last page of the pages panel, and we have a new spread above it. 
You can also, let me undo that move. You can also choose to just insert blank pages into the pages panel by going back up to the icon in the upper right hand corner and go to insert pages. Select where you want them to be located. Let's put them after page nine and that's right here. So it'll continue another page set of pages below page nine. And we're going to add two pages which will give us a spread. And if you had more than one master page created, you would want to select the master page that you want this this page to have. In this case, we on our master page A, we have the highlight and shadow and the footers. If we didn't select have this selected, those items would not appear on the new pages we are adding. But by default, because I only have one master page created, it's going to add the highlight, shadow, and footers to our new pages. So once you've chosen the page you want to insert, insert the two new pages after, click OK. And now we have a new set of blank pages with the highlight and shadow and our page numbers and footers. And now we have page 10, page 11. Now if you want to mix and match some of the items from the other um, pages, say you want to take this grid and you want to add it to page 10. All you need to do is go to page 7, where the grids are, click and drag across with your selection tool, and that's the black arrow tool. Notice how I didn't, when I dragged the whole page, I could drag all the way across, and it didn't select my footer. This is in a locked position on the master page, so this cannot be altered or changed unless we go to the master page. So don't worry about accidentally selecting these things. It won't affect it. So once we have those, uh, this grid selected, just go to Edit to Copy, and click on page 10. Let's bring back our guides so that we can see it. So let's go to the normal preview mode and that's under the window, sorry, the view menu under screen mode to normal. And now we can see our guides in our safe area. And on page 10 just go to edit to paste. And now we have another grid on page 10. And say I want to add another full page, um, sorry, a full page graphic frame to page 11. Go to pages 8 and 9, select on the left hand side of, of the page and select that graphic frame, edit to copy, click on page 11, and go to edit to paste. And now we have a graphic frame on page 11. And we have set it in place so that the page goes all the way to the edge of the bleed area. Now you'll notice that when we placed that new graphic frame, it didn't cover up our footers. That's because our footers are on a different layer. I put it on the second layer below the highlight and shadow effect so that anything that we, that we select and copy our images or, or graphic frames from is on the fourth and bottom layer. The layers palette in InDesign works very similar to that in Photoshop, whereas your every new item that you put on another layer sits on top of the previous layer. So I put all the images, all the graphic frames are on the bottom layer. All the text is above that. The page numbers are above those. And then your highlight and shadow effect is above all others because if you are using your highlight and shadow effect, you want it to overlay on everything that you've placed underneath it. If you didn't have this highlight and shadow effect, say you moved it underneath your images, you wouldn't even see the highlight and shadow effect and it would then defeat the purpose of having it. You can even rearrange the page order. If you want to have the, say, the grid next to one of these full graphic frame pages, just simply click on the grid page and drag it to you till the center of these two pages is highlighted and it will place it on the left hand side. And it, what, it does is, what it does is just switch those pages up. So now we have a grid of images and a single page and on the layer above we have a single page with a page filled with text content. Now this also moved um, 
because we moved it from a right hand side to a left hand side page you just need to click and drag this over so that the image now is centered with the um, middle of the page and goes all the way to the edge of the um, bleed area on the document. Well, that about covers everything for editing the magazine templates. Now take, you can take all the information that you've learned from the previous tutorials and apply that to your designs. The next we're going to cover how to export your files for printing and for uploading to issue. So continue on to our final tutorial, editing files for print and issue.